Hey guys, this is Matt, and I'm back with another Unity Masters tutorial, where today I'm going to be talking about Parallel Bidirectional A-Star. So let's take a look at the program. And here we have the Sequential A-Star implementation, which I went over in a previous video. You can go ahead and watch that if you want. I go over some of the uh, some more of the information as well as the uh, tracing for this program, but we're going to take a look at the Bidirectional A-Star. And you see that there are now these red nodes which represent thread 1 and then the green nodes which represent thread 2. These are the nodes that are in the closed set of uh, those two threads. Then you also have the purple nodes which are in the open set of thread 1 and then uh, this one, thread 2 has cyan nodes that to represent nodes that are in the open set but the implementation of this algorithm requires that one of the threads uh, to completely exhaust uh, their open set. So one of them is always not going to have uh, nodes inside of its open set. So that's normal. And one of the great things about this is you can do the enable tracing and you can step through it just like in the sequential A star and you can actually see both threads running at the same time. So it just gives you a, a, a bit of an idea of how this works and to speed things up you can select the node represented by this uh, orange blob and then continue to select it so now you see that these merged and eventually it's going to uh, exhaust all of the nodes inside of uh, I believe it's going to be green first and once that happens since they already merged they need to keep track of the shortest path and then as long as that path doesn't improve See, so now it's finished, since the uh, thread 2 has completed all of its open set. So it keeps track of the shortest path and whenever it merges, and as long as it doesn't improve by expanding it, it won't expand it. If it can be improved by expanding additional nodes, then it will, and the algorithm will continue. But we're going to take a look at the code and get more into that. Uh, this, out, this implementation is actually called a parallel new bidirectional A star. I got it from a research paper that I was uh, looking at, and I'll put a link to that research paper in the description if anybody wants to take a look. It's a pretty neat paper. The pseudocode to represent the code uh, that I implemented could use some uh, improving, in my opinion but uh, we're going to take a look at mine, see how that looks. Now we're going to take a look at the code, and this is the uh, Pathfinding Bidirectional A-Star class, and uh, the constructor just takes in the starting node and the goal node, and what this class is, is it's basically a wrapper around the thread that is, that is running, uh, just to be a little organized and object-oriented. So we take that starting node and the goal node and then for the second thread it's going to be swapped so this is actually going to be the goal node and this will actually be the uh, starting node. You can take a look at where this is done inside of the uh, map. So here we have the spawning node going to the destination node and then we have the destination node going to the spawning node. That's what makes it the uh, bidirectional. And then also each instance of uh, pathfinding bidirectional A has a brother thread and since this is a parallel bidirectional, uh, there there's only going to be one, or there's going to be two threads, but each thread is going to have one other brother thread going from the opposite destination, like we did here. So we set them equal to uh, each other, just so that we have access to it while we are doing the thread running. And then we go down to where we actually run, yes, run bidirectional A, and we're going to call the make thread, and we're going to give it a thread ID from the static variable uh, thread IDs 0 and thread IDs 1, which is just in here. It's either going to be a 1, an int 1, or an int 2. Some of the other uh, variables we have, static variables, is a boolean finished. This is going to tell uh, the algorithm that it's finished, it's found a path, and then it will also trigger the second thread to exit. And you also have an, a system object L, but it's actually just an int. 
Uh, so we're doing some uh, boxing here. L represents the shortest path so far that the algorithm was able to find. So obviously, uh, at the beginning of the algorithm, there the shortest path there hasn't been any shortest path. So we're going to give it the int max. And other another uh, unique thing we have for bidirectional A star is this capital F value for the for the thread. This represents the 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 F score of the leading edge, and that's passed through in the algorithm. So now uh, we go into make thread, which is where we left off. You give the ID, and this is just where you're going to make the thread, same as uh, the way we were doing for the sequential, because we were running that in its own thread. Uh, so you get a thread start, start T, give it the algorithm, the A star, or they give it the method, A star, same here, or same name as this one. And then you're going to make the thread, and I go ahead and set the priority to the highest, and then I'm going to start it. So that starts running this method. And the first thing we need to do is uh, put the starting node inside of the open set. And what I did here is for the node, I needed to add some additional uh, member variables in order to make it work with the bidirectional algorithm. So we have dictionaries here. And this is going to be a uh, thread ID to the integer. So the key is always going to be the thread ID. And for the G scores, this is going to be the G score, this will be the F score, and you know, so on. It is an open set, and this is the node that the parent is. Uh, so that's how I implemented uh, that portion. And since it's a dictionary, it's going to use its ID to access it. So it should always have a value as long as uh, the ID is there. And so then we do the normal things that you would do for uh, for an A star algorithm. You put it in the open set, you make the minimum heap, and you add it into that heap. And then you set the G scores and the F scores. G score plus a heuristic cost. Uh, number of steps, that's just used for tracing. And then we come to our first difference, which is while not finished. Instead of uh, it having uh, elements inside of the open set, it keeps track of this finished variable, which is the static variable that we went over at the top. Now uh, we're going to be a little bit more familiar with this open set dot get root. So we're going to get the smallest out of our open set, and that's current. So then you just take it out of the open set and you put it in the closed set. This is really just for uh, visualization purposes. Then you have uh, current uh, is current. Again, this is for tracing. So that stepping forward, stepping backwards, it can be ignored for now. It just has the control logic and then sessi is current, which changes it to yellow whenever it's being visualized. Now we have the current dot checked by thread. And checked by thread, uh, the algorithm actually has a, here it is, so it has a set M and this M is going to be uh, all of the nodes in the grid, so all of the nodes that are on our map. If this is in set, or it's going to be equal to that initially, but then we're going to take them out of that set as they get processed by our threads. So if it is in the set of all the nodes, then we're going to process it. But if it has been processed already, either by ourself or the bro our, our brother thread, then we're going to ignore it. This ensures that we don't expand a node that is in the open set of the other thread. It's just a brief explanation of that. That is what this checked by thread basically represents. It gets around having to uh, have a set uh, just of all those nodes. And here we 
are doing that. So we have the F score is less than L. So this is what I was talking about with L being the shortest path so far that the algorithm, that the overall, both the algorithms have been able to find since this is a static variable. If the F score of the current node being expanded is less than that. So it's not going to expand the node if it doesn't have the potential to be the shortest path. And this does a little bit of additional pruning to uh, speed up the algorithm. And then if the current G score uh, plus the brother's F score minus the heuristic cost from the starting to the current is less than L. So what is this? Well, this is going to be uh, the, the F score minus the heuristic. So if you take the heuristic cost away from the F score, then you're left with the G score. So it is the brother's G score for its uh, uh, leading edge and the G score of the node that's being expanded. So you need to make sure that those two things added together have the potential to be the shortest path. And this is what guides the expansion towards the uh, leading edge of the opposite thread. Now, for each, so if all those things are true, then we're going to expand the node. So for each node, for each neighboring node inside of uh, current.getNeighbors, as long as it's not null and it is walkable, just our base conditions, then we're going to get the cost to move to that node. And we're going to do that by using our heuristic, since the heuristic is actually just the uh, Chebyshev distance. And I went over that a little bit more in the, the last video. So if we do that with a node that's right next to you, then it's actually going to give you the distance to it. So it's just a little bit of a shortcut to finding that. So that gives us our cost. So now if the neighboring node is inside of set M, so it's checked by thread is equal to zero, then we're also going to need the neighboring node G score to be greater than the current G score plus the cost. So it's just improving on the neighbor's G score. So here, the neighboring G score is going to be set to uh, the tentative G score that we had. Uh, the F score is going to be calculated. The parent is now the current. And then here we have a no, this is going to be the same. So we have the neighboring dot is an open set. So if it is not in the open set, then we're going to add it to the open set. Else, we're just going to reevaluate that node neighbor since we changed its uh, F score. We have to re reheap it inside of our heap. And this part is was added as well. We have uh, we need to manipulate the uh, L. L value, and then we also need to actually end, or we, act, we have to be able to calculate the path after we've finished. And that is something that the uh, paper didn't have in it, so I had to add this part myself. So we have the neighboring g-score of the brother uh, is not equal to max. That just keeps it from overflowing. I was running into that problem since I had set everything to int dot max value. It was overflowing and then actually being smaller whenever it wasn't supposed to be. So uh, neighboring dot g score of the brother thread plus the neighbor g score of uh, my thread. So we're going to add the g scores of the two threads together. And if that is less than the shortest path so far, then we're going to put a lock on L, the object L, so that we can't, uh, uh, we don't get any race conditions. Uh, then we're going to do that check one more time to make sure nothing, there wasn't any funny business in between these two portions. Like I said, race conditions. Now we're going to set L to the new shortest path 
which is the uh, my G score, this thread's G score for the neighboring node, and then the brother's thread G score for that same neighboring node. Now we need to set the ending node and the brother thread's ending node. One is going to be the current, and then one is going to be the neighbor. And that's the portion that wasn't actually in uh, the algorithm. So, after all of that is done, we're going to set the checked by thread equal to ID. This basically takes it from the uh, set M and puts it into uh, your set, your closed set. And now we have the exiting conditions. Uh, this should look familiar. The open set dot count is greater than zero. Well, so if uh, there are still nodes inside of the set, then we're going to update our F score to the, we're going to take a peek at our leading edge inside of the open set, the smallest value, and then we're going to get the G score of that. And that's what was used up here for our brother's uh, F score. So that does the leading edge uh, estimate. Else, the open set is empty, and you're going to set finish to true. And that is going to exit out of this thread whenever we get back up to the while. And then also inside of the brothering thread, the next time it does its calculation paths, it's going to exit. All right, so that's about it. We do have our uh, code available for this project and others on our GitHub account. That'll be another link in the description. So let me know what you think. Thanks.